Hey, great thinkers. Welcome back to another episode of the Think Great Experience. You're in for a treat today because we have with us Dr. Beth Westy. Dr. Beth Westy is a doctor of chiropractic. She is an author. She's a podcast host, a speaker, and she's an expert on women's health and nutrition. In addition to many other things, including being the founder of Eat For Your Cycle, Dr. Beth Westy, I just want to say welcome to the show. It's a total honor to have you here today. Yay, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. This is going to be a lot of fun. Well, you know, this is a show about greatness, things that we're doing to achieve greatness in our lives and the lives of others. And honestly, you are helping people to achieve greatness every single day in their lives. Is that correct? I, I do my best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're also very humble. We'll add that to your, your intro. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, oh, you've done so many things. Mm -hmm. What are you doing right now? What's your main focal point? Yeah. So right now I work virtually with women um, from women all over the world, really. And we really focus on health hormones, uh, you know, and the right nutrients for the female body um, based on where their system is at. So it's a very different way of looking at uh, women's health and aligning what you're doing, how you're eating with what your body really needs and where your hormonal, you know, system is at, you know, whether it be, oh, I'm trying to get pregnant or I've, you know, been through menopause and I'm still struggling, you know, there are different bodies that women live in, sure. right? our bodies change. In my book, I have a, um, a whole section of it called the seven bodies of Eve. And it really describes, you know, the different bodies women go through in their lifetime, which is just very different than men. Sure. So letting women understand you're, you're going to live in a different body all the time throughout your lifetime and just acknowledge that and work with it versus fighting against it. When did you first come up with this concept? Now, I, I know as a, as a chiropractor, you've worked with adjusting and aligning people and helping them have greatness that way. At some point, this idea of, of getting the physiology of a woman and her nutrition and exercise to be in alignment had to come to you at some point. What was that like when that started to come together? Yeah, so this actually started with like, a, like a lot of people's. It started from a, a pain point <laughs> for me. Um, and I, I had kind of a rough go of it for, for a little while. I, um, so I have three kids. I had my first two kids while I was in graduate school, while I was in chiropractic school. I graduated, you know, and then um, a couple months later, bought a practice, started, you know, working, trying to earn money. <laughs> yes. And then a couple months after that, found out I was pregnant again. So then, um, you know, and then I actually, she was born a couple months early. So I had, okay. uh, in less than a year out from school. I had a brand new business that was honestly failing. I was weeks away from closing my doors because it just wasn't going well. Um, you know, because I'm sure you work with a lot of business people. Yes. You know, it's hard to get things off the ground That's if you right. don't know what you're doing and you don't have any experience or any guidance. Yeah. Um, you went to and, you went to chiropractic school, not yes. necessarily here's how to run a business school. Right. Yeah. We had like two classes where we met like <laughs> one day, one for one hour a week. And they're like, oh, here's all your business knowledge to, nope, no idea. Now you know everything. Go get them. <laughs> Yeah, go get out there champ oh, yeah. it was so <laughs> rough and um and again it's not for a lack of trying right like i busted right. my butt but just i was spending so much time and energy and money in the complete wrong direction for what was helpful for my business and i had no right. idea other than uh this isn't working and my business isn't going anywhere right so at this point though i had you know i had a preemie you know she was born she was in the nicu for 23 days wow. um and i had a two-year-old and a four-year-old at home and I wasn't making any money in my business and was busting my butt working, you know, trying to work 60, 70 hours a week. And, you know, I, at that point, there's like a breaking point. I did get some guidance. We got some different coaching for the clinic. Um, so things started to turn around at that point, yeah. but throughout the next year, I was just on the grind, just on the grind. So I'd come out of like a really, you know, graduate school of, of any kind is really difficult. Yeah. I had babies at the same time. And then I had a preemie on top of that and all these other things. So I, with all that stress, I actually started getting ovarian cysts oh, and I would have a geez. cyst that would burst every month and it would put me on the floor. So I would be treating patients, have to run back to my back room and crouch on the floor. And I know we've met like in person. So you know how tall I am. I'm not I know tall. how tall you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm That's why I like that. I like this podcast format because I feel like I'm the same height as you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I try and like hide behind a table 
you're not hiding like, behind tables. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. No, but no. that was like that was how awful it was to try. So and how long it. did that last? The, the a year and a half. Oh, a year and a half. I was in that kind of pain, and it was a struggle. And when I went in, my finally, it was my husband who took me into the ER finally because he was like, "You're being ridiculous." I can't. And I was like, "It's a cyst. I can't." And I'm trying to figure this out, but really, it's you know, stress, all this stuff, and. Um, the only answers they could give me at the ER was, you know, here's some Vicodin, here's some birth control. And yeah. I was like, I've got babies at home. I can't be on Vicodin all day. No. Are you kidding me? Were they associating the cysts with stress? No, they just said, oh, there's something wrong with your hormones. That was, the, that was the answer I got. And I was like, this is ridiculous. So it was about as much information as they gave you in school to run your business. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you know? Seriously. Same. Yeah. Same. And, wow. uh, the, the thing I also am trained in, so I'm a, I'm a chiropractor, but I'm also, um, I also went to massage therapy school before I started chiropractic school. And I'm also certified in acupuncture and Eastern medicine. So I know I, all the degrees, <laughs> I just love it. I know I left a few things out of your bio, but <laughs> pretty impressive resume, Beth. I mean, just absolutely amazing what you're doing, but all of that yeah. ties in with helping people to have greater yeah. lives. Yeah. Well, and that was the thing I, you know, I, it comes from that really tough spot where I couldn't find any answers and the answers that I was trying to seek out weren't helping. I, I struggled for over a year and a half with this and it was, it was something that it was holding me back in my life, in my business. You know, I was doing the best I could, sure. but it was really holding me back a lot. And finally, when I left that ER, that was the biggest pain point. I was so mad. <laughs> I was furious with just the treatment of it. And like, if my hormones are off, why are we not talking about hormones? Why are you just trying that's to right. give me Vicodin and birth control instead of actually trying to help my body? Yeah. And that's when I dove into the Eastern medicine side. And I started looking at how other forms of healing look at the female body and work with the female body. And so I started um, eating for my hormones. I went through some different hormonal um, detoxes, things like mm -hmm. that. And I was able to, within a couple of months, get rid of the cysts and they haven't come back. So how, I, I mean, I'm hearing how important it is, but that, that nutrition side of things, getting that in alignment with your body yeah. actually healed you from the cysts. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and, the thing that people, you know, when, if, if for people who are familiar with PCOS, you know, polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, a lot of times they say that there's, there's no cure. There's no way. Okay. But I didn't have them before. And just, you know, all that stress I was under and I couldn't yeah. change the stress overnight, but I could change how my body was functioning. And that's what I focused on. And that's what I teach women how to do. And so, so through this process, you put together a program. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've actually authored books on health and wellness too. Yeah. Yeah. And what is it, what is it like for you? Cause I know people are listening right now, maybe saying, well, I have a pain here and I've got a pain here and I, I'm not feeling good here. And they're probably being prescribed medication. I'm not saying for them not to take the medication. I mean, you know, my wife is a cancer survivor, a cardiac arrest survivor, you know, multiple forms of cancer. So they, they prescribe things so fast. And yet the nutrition side is so critical. Yeah. How does it feel when you're getting feedback from some of these ladies you're working with that you've enhanced their lives through nutrition. I mean, that's got to feel amazing to you. It's, it's, it's the, it's my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing about what I do. Honestly, it's not about, cause a lot of women will look at what I do and immediately they will notice, you know, cause I'll talk about like weight loss or yeah. you know, fat tissue and things like that. And my, my point of talking about fat tissue is that fat tissue is actually really dynamic. It can make estrogen. It can make hormones. And people don't realize that they just think of, Oh, I have this fat and my belly's bigger or something. And I'm like, no, it actually produces more hormone, which can cause other issues. So instead of just targeting that, like, look at the whole body. And when yeah. you get to increase or improve how your body functions, it opens up all these different areas of your life. One of my favorite things that happened, this was very recently, this was a gal I'd been working with for a while and she was under a lot of stress. She had all these hormone issues, all this stuff. And she was so uh, frustrated with her physical body and everything else and having such a hard time just getting through every single day that that was her whole life. And there wasn't any room for anything else. And when we started working together and she realized like, I've got more energy, I'm sleeping better, I feel better. Oh my gosh, everything is shifting and changing. I'm more confident in myself. She, one day on a call with me, and this, again, this was recent, and this is, this happens, you know, I don't want to say all the time, but it's, it happens every now and then. And I love it. She's like, I'm quitting my job. I'm quitting my job. I, I realized that this is, 
a, a, a source of stress. <laughs> I've been thinking about it sort of mm -hmm. in the back of my head for about four or five years. And I've never done anything because I just couldn't even handle <laughs> thinking about getting a new job or my resume or anything or any of these. Oh, but I can do it now. I feel so good. I've got so much energy. My, my brain is so clear. I don't have any more brain fog. I'm going to do it. I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to do this other thing. And that is what I love. You know, it's amazing when your body is off, yeah. it could be so hard for you to even accomplish the smallest task or objective, or, you know, if you're not feeling right, you're not even going to pursue goals. Yes. And so, so what I'm hearing is not only did you make her feel greater, you empowered her to make other shifts in her life, things that are out of your control. It's not like, it's not like you recommended, you know, what you should do is quit your job. <laughs> I mean, that, that was all on her. But once she started to take control of her own body, she could take control of her destiny. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, I'm going to talk about the pandemic for a second. Okay. Here we are coming out of 13 months of the worldwide pandemic. One of the most common denominators through all of this mm -hmm. is everybody's been stressed. Mm -hmm. So this level of stress has to be impacting everybody's health. It is. I mean, you're probably seeing it from a, from a client perspective. Are you seeing people with just more day-to-day -day stress? I mean, you and I talked about, you know, homeschooling children or, or their distance learning. So yeah. nobody's out of the boat, if you will, in the whole pandemic, we're all impacted by it. Yeah. Are you, are you noticing more stress than normal in your clients Yeah. prior to them? I mean, prior to you obviously helping them, but what is that like? What are you experiencing right now as it relates to the pandemic? Yeah, that is a great question. So I do, um, you know, some testing for women. Like sometimes it's, uh, you know, these are labs that get sent to your home and you send them in and then we can yep. go over lab results, things like that. Hormone testing, um, gut testing, things like that. And here's a few things that are a trend that I have seen is that before I would see people with really high levels or, you know, things can be all over the place, but usually there was a specific trauma associated with it. So somebody who say they're getting separated and divorced and then a parent dies and all this stuff kind of happens within a, like a major months. incident. Yeah. And then yeah. their body kind of crash afterwards yeah. and here's their test results. I am seeing this with like everyone now, every hormone, like just about every hormone test I'm doing now, their stress levels are so off the charts. Yeah that it impacts it's like their system is in a constant fight or flight it is in a constant reactive state and it can't come down and that is exhausting and it wears on your entire you know of all your body systems you know yeah. how well things function how well you can sleep right and it, and it impacts how well your gut works that's right all this stuff so a lot of what I realize with people is that again, thinking like, oh, well, you're, you, you're at home or you're not your distance working or whatever, this should be easier. It's actually that much harder because you have all the stress from the life that you had before. That's right. Piled on <laughs> I mean, everything else. And the, the hardest thing I think for people is the unknown. No one well, knows it, when, when it's it, going to end. No one knows. Well, exactly. <laughs> no, we've, we've been in. <laughs> We, we've been in the unknown for a long time now. Yeah. You know, it, it, I've even said this whole pandemic, the remote working, the social distancing, the wearing of the masks, this time period, you know, where are we going on 13, 14 months now? Yeah. That's longer than most military deployments. And so what yeah. I see in the business sector are business leaders and team members that are stressed. Yeah. Because you can't escape it. I mean, you have reminders everywhere. Mm -hmm. If you turn on the news... It's all about COVID or the vaccine or possible removal of restrictions. Um, you can't have a normal birthday party right now. You can't do this. You can't do that. Or you just like me, I had stress the other day. I walked up to a store and I forgot my mask at home. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just a lot of stress. Now I got to yeah. find a mask, but that's something we didn't do, you know, a year and a half ago. We weren't worried about a mask. Yeah. Or, you know, when our children are going to go back to school, if you think about the questions we're asking ourselves these days, it's so different than a year and a half ago. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I would, I would venture to say more people need to really focus. Everybody needs to focus on their health and wellness right now, because yeah. stress is a factor for everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, it's called PTSD, but we associate it with the military and, and the S just stands for stress. So stress can come from anywhere. Yes. 
yeah. and cause all kinds of side effects. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And the hard thing about stress is that you can't see it on somebody, yeah. right? And you can't measure, you know, how does your cup of stress weigh versus my cup of stress, which is heavier, which is more, you know, it, it is something internal that's happening, yep. right? It's not like you get a cut on your arm and you can see it that's and you right. can see the injury and see it heal or anything. Yep. No, it's all internal. It's all internal. And no. it impacts how you absorb nutrients. It impacts, you know, the release of natural, you know, neurotransmitters, things like that. All that stuff decreases when the body is under stress. Well, let me ask you this too. One thing I've, I've, read about and actually talked about in one of my books is that when you experience stress, it doesn't really, the body can't tell one stress from the next. It's just yeah. stress. Mm -hmm. um, you also start to increase more cortisol. Yeah. And, and so the release of that chemical actually has the impact of making you one of the side effects of that is it increases your appetite. You get hungrier. Yeah. And so Here's the ironic part that I found stress causes maybe to eat more and maybe not even eat right. You know, you're just eating to eat and then you put on weight, which causes more stress, which causes more cortisol. It, it, it can become an endless cycle. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so yeah. to a certain extent, what you're doing, this level of greatness that you're helping people hit is you're ending a cycle that maybe they didn't even know they were in. Yes. Yeah. Well, and it's a frustrating thing because a lot of women that I work with, they say the same thing over and over. They're like, I didn't change anything. I, I'm not eating that much more. I, I still eat pretty good. I'm still working out, yeah. but I, I keep gaining weight and I can't lose it no matter what, what is going on. And always one of the number one factors when, when that's their yeah. story is it's cortisol. That cortisol has this yeah. huge negative impact on your body systems. And you can't, you can't just, you can't outrun it. You can't outrun yeah. that cortisol. You can't eat cleaner than it. You don't get more kale. No. <laughs> That's not if, it were only it. So, if it were only so simple. <laughs> right? But it goes back to that intangible. Like it's happening in your body, but you can't yeah. see it. You can't so see it's it. hard for us to really think about it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I do that's why I do hormone testing with it. And we look at cortisol levels, how your body stores cortisol, how it uses cortisol, how your adrenals are working. And I gotta tell you, at least every couple of days, I have a gal that when I go over her testing, they'll cry on mm -hmm. the phone because I'll say, this is what your levels are. Here's what I'm seeing. And sure. they are like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I, this is exactly how I'm feeling. I finally, like, this is a thing. I'm like, yeah, this is a thing. This is a thing for you. It's not in your head. It's not just that you're doing something wrong. There is, your system isn't working correctly because of the amount of stress that you're under. What I love about you, Beth, is that this isn't just a job for you. You're on a mission to help women. I mean, every day you're on that mission and, and I can hear it in your voice. I get, you know, the passion is oozing out of you. Um, I, I have to ask you this. So, you know, I know you talk a lot about the physiology of women, right? They're, they're, they're on a cycle. So, so week to week, their lives change, right? They, they change yep. week to week. And you've recommended that their nutrition and that their, their exercise makes those shifts with them. Yeah. When you first share that, with a client. Is there some resistance to that, that ideology at first? Are they saying, wait a minute, what, you know, because that is kind of, it makes sense, Yeah. but it is a new way of thinking about the female body, about these constant cycles that's going through these, these ever um, occurring changes and that everything must shift with it. Mm -hmm. Do you ever meet with some resistance where like, wait a minute, or are they just, are they just on the team Beth and they're all in? <laughs> Team Beth. Yeah. You got to do some educating, right? You're educating <laughs> yes. people too. Yeah. Yeah. What's really funny. And this is, um, and I know you, you're a speaker too. So this is something, you know, right. I, I haven't done a talk in over a year. Right. And, and that's one of the things I loved about doing a talk was when I would get up in a room full of women and I would start sharing this information, yeah. just how the female body works and how it's different than the male body. And then how we've been, you know, we just didn't learn this stuff. This wasn't part of our education right. as much. It's not right. And there's, uh, there's this moment that I can see in all of their faces, light bulbs go off and they're like, oh my gosh, yes. It's just like, th this makes so much sense. This is why when I go for a run, sometimes I'll run five miles one, one week and I feel great. And then a week and a half later, I run the same five miles. I ate the same thing for breakfast. I drank the same amount of water and I feel like my legs are cement. What am I doing? No, you took a different body for a run that day. Oh, that's it's so not that great. You, yep. Right? So yeah. it's a 
And women, they understand it because they have felt it and they have experienced it their whole lives. And it's finally like putting the puzzle pieces together for men, half the men that I, and I'll just like, this is just the experience I've had with it. Half the men that I um, will talk with or educate, they get it too, because they work with women. Yeah. They, they're, you know, paying attention to women, married to women. And the other half of men, they are, they ask more questions of, well, how come we don't learn this? And I'm like, because it's not part of the well, because they haven't tuned in to hear there. Dr. Beth really, West, that's why yeah, they haven't learned it. Yeah, is this really that much of a difference? Does, that, does it really make that much of a difference? Yeah. Come on, it can't make that much of a difference. Or I would have learned about this in some of my textbooks and things like that. I'm thinking your textbooks are based off of information that is 30 or 40 or 50 years old, yeah. but they haven't updated and they still don't do studies on women. Yeah. Um, so. Well, this is pretty interesting because, you know, we're in a time where everybody's supposed to just be the same, right? Like. I mean, look, I, I hear what you're saying and you yeah. are correct, but people are different and they, their yeah. bodies function different. And I yeah. think what you're doing is fantastic. You know, I, my wife is a, you know, multiple time cancer survivor. She's a cardiac arrest survivor. Um, yeah. She's been through so much in her life. Her body is physically, her body was different than mine to begin with. Yeah. But she also has a very unique case, but I also have a 14 year old daughter and that, that is certainly different. That experience that she goes through is different than the experience that my boys went through when they were 14. Yeah. So it's undeniable. I, I love the fact that you're blazing the trail and saying, look, we are different. Yeah. Our physiology is different. And you have to learn how to, how to make that work. You know, when I, when I moved out to Minnesota, I learned some things because I came from California. Minnesota is different than California. Uh-huh. You have to winterize things out here. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't even know what that was living in California. I'm like, what, what do they mean they winterize your boat? What does that mean? What do you mean I have to turn off my pipes? What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't do any of that stuff in California. It's just perfect weather all year round. Yeah. But if I came out here with the California mindset and took those same actions out here, things would go wrong. And that's what I'm hearing is that if we're not aware of these cycles or seasons of the body, if you will. Yeah things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And, and, but it's hard to track it. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And so right. here you are big part of what you do as a speaker, as an author, as a, as a coach is education. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm actually surprised that 50% of the men actually got it as fast as they did when you were saying that <laughs> it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a shocker for me. Pay attention, right. It's because yeah. they pay attention. They, they have wives that they it, like for them, They've like, they, you know, they have women in their life that they're like, oh, that makes sense. Or they're yeah. trainers that work with women and they're like, oh, this is why sometimes they work out and it's like this for them. And sometimes when they do the same workout, it's like that. That's yeah. right. So they experience it not personally, but you know, so it, well, like, oh, okay. Yeah. Even just working out with my wife, you know, sometimes she'll say, well, here's what I ate on this day. And I lost this weight. I ate the exact same thing. I did the exact same thing here and I gained <laughs> weight. And I'm like, now I know what to say. You yeah. Well, it's Dr. Different. Westy. Go it's ask different. And, and women, <laughs> women weigh different week to week. Like our, the female body will change weight yeah. throughout the month. I mean, there is a point of the month where the female body, the uterus is twice the size you have a different blood volume. You have different fluid levels in your body. Fluid weighs a lot. So you can gain five pounds, 10 pounds throughout the month. And it's normal. I so when I talk about weight, relief. that must yeah. be a relief to them to hear that there's some normalcy yes, to what they yes. think is abnormal. Yes. So, so measuring weight loss for women, I always recommend it's not, you know, it's not measuring it day to day or week to week and comparing to what you were last week. Cause that was sure. a different body. Yeah. I mean, the male body, you can do that, but the female body it's measuring what you were today. And then comparing that to last month on the same day of your, yeah. of your hormonal cycle. So if you're on day 10 today, it's last month, day 10, that's the same body that you're measuring against. So let's just say somebody's listening to this. They say, I got to reach out to Dr. Westy. I got, I got to contact her. And she reaches out to you. What does a typical program look like? What, what would you do? I know you're going to look at some, some statistics, some vitals, run some tests, but what does the whole process look like for a client who wants to achieve greatness with her body, with your program? Yeah. So we start with uh, hormone testing and everything else that lets mm -hmm. us know exactly what's happening in their system. So we can address any nutrient deficiencies or anything else going on right off the bat. And then um, I have a, a 12 week program. 
Okay. So I work with women for 12 weeks at a time and it takes them through, you know, really learning how to eat for their hormones and cycle and everything else. And everything about the program is designed for the female body. Okay. So it's 12 weeks because that is a hormone cycle in the female body, 12 weeks. You know, it takes three months from the time, like to create uh, an ovarian egg, you know, to, yeah. to have that hormone shift it's 12 weeks. And, and that's why my program is that amount of time. Um, everything is designed. So you get to learn how your body works and functions, what your specific body needs, and then how to work through that using nutrition and any, any other support tools that you need to feel good, to have your body function well. And then your physical results are a side effect essentially of sure. your body getting healthier. Yeah. So that's what we really do. So when, when you have your 12 week program, is there some customization built oh, in that you do yes. based on each, each of the ladies that you coach? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So some people have a thyroid issue. There's different recommendations okay. nutritionally for that, or if they're pre-diabetic or, you know, if they have, um, fibroids or, you know, so any other hormonal things and their, and their goals, you know, if, if a gal is, you know, um, say somebody's in her late thirties and she's trying to get pregnant, that's a different, you know, regimen than somebody who's in their yeah. late thirties and going through early menopause. Cause those things happen too. So, so you're going to look at the kind of the medical factors involved, mm -hmm. age, their goals, health history, and, all of yeah, them yeah. and customize them into that program. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is awesome. So when I met you the very first time you were wearing a uniform <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> and we haven't talked about this yet, but <laughs> this is one more thing that you have done. Uh -huh. Um, can you tell us about the number 83 and what that means to you? Yeah. Yeah. So 83, that is my football number. <laughs> so awesome. All right. So you got to explain to people that you play professional football on an all women's league. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the Minnesota Vixen, um, part of the WFA, um, which I think the WFA stands for Women's Football Alliance or something. Okay. Um, it's a whole league. It's a, and, the, and the Vixen has been around for 21 or 22 years now, I think. Yeah. So a long time that they've had um, uh, you know, women's football in this, in this country. Not a lot of people know about it. They're just, just kind of, I think, breaking the surface of getting to be more well-known. Um, but it's a, it's an amazing thing to be able to be part of a team. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an athlete. I was always, I was always an athlete. I got a scholarship to play volleyball in college. Um, and so I just, I love it. And when I found out about the Vixen, it was one of, it was such a joy because I missed that part, you know, yeah. uh, not only working out and, you know, stretching yourself physically, but just being a part of a team, you know, and they're, they're such a great bunch, you know, Ugh. Well, you know, we have a we have a podcast scheduled with Laura Brown. So one of the yeah. co-owners of the Vixen will be on this show. You know, we've had the privilege of sponsoring uh, one of the players. So Amanda, Amanda Atkins, who's my niece, uh, plays on the team. And and, and we've had the, the privilege of going to the games and checking it all out. But I remember the first time they said we have a, a all women's football team full tackle. I said, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> And, you know, we've been to a lot of games and it's absolutely awesome. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we see the league, all the teams just continue to grow and, and develop over the years. Cause there's teams in many different States and people don't yeah. know this. Yeah. Yeah. There's teams. There's just about every state has a team of some kind. It might not be the first division, but yeah. know, Minnesota, Minnesota has two teams right now. Still, yeah, so. that's what I heard. Yeah. Well, now you've got to, you've got to be able to experience a little bit of greatness playing football too, not just the fact that you get to play football, which is awesome, but I'm sure it's inspiring for, for young girls to see that they can pretty much do anything that they want. Yeah. You know, it's, it's one of the things that brings me a lot of joy, you know, in an, I want to say non-professional capacity, because there's, you know, I get a lot of joy from the work that I do with women, but sure. the other piece of it is really, um, you know, women in athletics. I, I have such a, you know, it's a, it's a love of mine. Yeah. And, it comes from, cause I was an athlete for forever. Um, and what's really funny is I have two girls and neither one of them like team sports. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. And it's something, whatever, but You're like, come on. No, you'll really love it. <laughs> I know they love to like bike ride and longboard and we snowboard a lot. And so they're very active, very athletic. They just don't enjoy team sports and that's okay. But there's a lot of other gals out there. And what's interesting is being a parent on the other side of, you know, being an athlete. And I've been yeah. able to experience this. There's, it's so funny. I remember um, we did a football camp 
and there was a mom who brought her daughter and the, she was just all over the field, loving every second of it, soaking it up. And I, I had this amazing conversation with the mom and she was like, I don't understand this. She's like, I was never into sports or whatever. I was like, listen, that's fine. I was like, but you're doing the great mom thing and supporting sure. her. She was like, yeah, I'll take her to anything. And she goes, I'm just so grateful that there are things like this and that there are people like you players yeah. that are here to help these younger gals realize right. that this is something they can do. So it's, um, what's the word, like a generational, you know, yeah. thing. Yeah. And that's how this growth is really going to happen. What's what I find most amazing of all the amazing things in this league is that the players pay their own way. They're not receiving a paycheck. They don't have contracts per se yeah. for financial contracts. In fact, they have to find their own sponsors. They have to pay for their own travel. Mm -hmm. um, talk about dedication, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what inspires me the most. There's a true passion for playing because you have to pay for it. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would still be passionate if I was in the NFL making 20 million a year, that I could be passionate about that. <laughs> but the fact that all of the women on all of the teams pay their own way is it speaks volumes about the empowerment that happens with that sport. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really hope that we get more audience, more attendance, just more notoriety for the sport because it is absolutely fun to watch. We've had a yeah. great time at every game. Yeah. Yeah. The games are um, well, I've I've only watched, you know, from the field standpoint, but I'll, you know, in the future maybe watching from the stands more. <laughs> well, well, what was your and, and what was your position? Um, I played tight end. Okay. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Well, and I've been to games, I've watched you play. Yeah. So and you also did a lot to promote the Vixen off, you know, off the field, if you will. So you yeah. attended a lot of events and yeah. I don't know where you find all the time. I think somehow you have also created a time machine um, <laughs> that you haven't told us about because I don't know how you're doing all of these things, but you're absolutely amazing. So I want to ask you about something that I know was a big challenge for you. You at some point sold your practice, you sold your chiropractic oh, yeah. office and started your new business model mm -hmm. and some people were kind of saying you know that might be a mistake a lot of people said that <laughs> yeah so when you hear all of that it has to make you think okay am i making the right decision when you decided to sell the practice and you heard all of this feedback from people saying it could be a mistake it probably won't work out what drove you to keep going to build the amazing business you have right now when everyone was telling you, not everybody, but so many people were telling you, maybe you shouldn't do this. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is a really good point. And so this is a blend of like, when I started doing the work that I'm doing now, I started in my office, I started working with patients and I had to work with them over my lunch hour because yeah. I couldn't fit them in during my regular work day because my, my clinic ran on a, you know, I, I grew my business and I had a very successful clinic. I had a, I had a big clinic and I was, you know, the only doc in there and I was doing it. And I was, uh, it, it was, it was something that I had built it to a point within a few years where a lot of people looked at me saying, you're nuts. You just busted your butt to build this big office. Yeah. Why the heck would you get rid of it? What are you thinking? You know, um, but what I really had a, a passion for and what I wanted to do next was on such a, it was on a bigger scale. And I actually tried to write a book and have the clinic and run the clinic and then have three babies at home. You do and need I, a time machine. Yeah. Yeah. So I got about, in about six months, I think I wrote like, I think I wrote like five pages in six months. And I was and like, that can be frustrating. Gonna, yeah. So I was like, okay, either this is going to take me 10 years to actually write this book or I'm just going to do it. And and really my thought process was, you know what? I've already built a clinic. I know how to do this. If I want to do it again, if I sell and in a couple of years, I totally flop and none of this other stuff goes anywhere and nobody cares about my message, I can build another clinic. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not uh, tough to do. You know, it's not difficult. Right. It's a simple thing. All it takes is work and I'm going to work anyway. I'm going to work. That driving force for you that you yeah. knew you were going to empower people in a different capacity than you ever have. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And one of the things that there was, um, one of my coaches from college, this was a, a volleyball coach I had in college. And he, I, th that was like some of these words that I've had, you know, along the way and, and his sticks out in my mind because he said, listen, your position on the court is the easiest position. 
And I was like, what? I have the <laughs> hardest position. He was like, yeah, that's what's easiest about it. All you got to do is outwork everybody else. And it's the easiest position. And I was like, oh. It's, there's okay. a lot of logic to that. I get it. <laughs> right? Yeah. You still have to work your butt off, but I get what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's all you got to do. Your sole focus is to outwork everybody. There well, you go. That's simple. Well, that's the simplest thing. That's easy to do. And I was like, I can do that. I can outwork all of this. And if I can right. work my butt off and for some reason it doesn't turn out how I envision it, I can always still go back to what I was doing that I loved and just maybe change it in a different capacity so I could involve more of this in there. You know, there's no limit. All I, The only thing that would be holding me back is the fear of what other people would think that I'm selling my clinic yeah. I, oh, I built this big clinic and oh, what am I thinking or whatever. But I was actually shocked at a lot of people's response. I thought, I thought I was going to get more encouragement and I lost, I lost some friends. I lost a, a friend that I had had for years. She was like, I would say a best friend, you know, somebody I talked to yeah. every single day and she ripped me a new one. Wow. And then never talked to me again. <laughs> and that's still true. I guess you find out who your I guess you find out who your real friends are when yes. you make a decision yes. like that. So the thinking great part of that, I don't understand, That's right. but you know, maybe you can I know. tell me more. <laughs> but, but you know, it's it is interesting because what I found is greatness is simple. It just takes a lot of hard work. Yes. It's not complex, right? What you're doing now, maybe the the program that you've built is complex, but you're you're breaking that program down for for women so it's simple for them. But again, it's still, here's a simple 12 weeks, but you have mm -hmm. to put hard work into it. it yeah. it's, I've always said before, becoming a Marine, I went into boot camp. Boot camp's 12 weeks. So, <laughs> Marine Corps oh. boot camp, the longest boot camp out there is 12 weeks. It's so simple to become a Marine. All you got to do is go into boot camp. There's <laughs> a very simple program, and they're really good at it. It takes a lot of hard work. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting. I was in there, I was in Marines for four years, but the feeling of going through that program stays with you for a lifetime, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I'm, I think so many people are glad that you had that leap of faith back then. You've impacted yeah. people in a way you would never have done that had you been stuck in the office. Now, how has the pandemic affected your business? Because what I'm hearing is you left the office world for the virtual world. And we're in a very virtual world right now. So, you know, as a speaker and a coach that went into businesses and live events, we had a big shift to make in the team. We have an amazing team. And, and between Jacob and, and Sapphire, they took us virtual and did everything. I can't take credit for any of it. They literally sat me down and said, you need to speak right into here and you'll be fine. <laughs> um, and we've been fortunate that so many of our clients have brought us in virtually. It's, it's been awesome. I feel it's really enhanced our message, but a lot of businesses going remote or being socially distanced at that level or having to do everything virtual um, was a learning curve and an obstacle at the same time. But the pandemic almost fit right into your model, not the virus, but right. virtual yeah. Yeah. fit into your model. So how, how have you done through this based on the fact of your business went virtual anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So things have really, um, I've had some growth, which is, which is amazing. Um, but the thing I get even more excited about is how it has shifted. I feel like the mindset of women, uh, women are the caretakers in the home. They are the drivers of health in their homes and being at home or realizing, oh my gosh, my health is that much more important. They want to do something, but so often now they're like, okay, I don't want to go into an appointment. I want to get something delivered to my home. I want to talk to somebody virtually right. and connect with somebody virtually. And that's exactly what I do. So the, the, and the amount of customization and service that I have is also very, very different um, than, you know, even doing a virtual appointment, you know, cause I, I've got yeah. kids. I did a virtual pediatric appointment for, for my kids. Sure. And, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, this is a service they're providing. That's great. But I was like, this, this just lets me know that I'm providing such, you know, a higher level of service to people right. um, on a virtual level. And really, you know, also doing the hormone testing, things like that, where they don't have to go anywhere. It's sent right to your house. That convenience and that customization is what people are looking for right now. So your whole 12 week program is virtual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is awesome when you can work with anybody in the world. You just got to factor in time zones. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the only that? tricky thing. I'll yeah. do. Uh, I've had women from, you know, um, 
you know, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, yep. South America, um, you know, um, South Africa, there's uh, oh, Ireland, the UK, just everywhere, everywhere. So um, you, you are, you are creating greatness internationally is what I'm hearing. International greatness. Yeah. Well, and then the thing I think about is that it's internationally that women struggle with the same things. We're sure. all the same, you know, yeah. We're all, the, all those, all these like systems for women's health are the same worldwide, which is not great. And right. that's, that's what I want to change. I want women well, to be empowered in their own knowledge and their own health to take the steps that they need to take moving forward. I mean, you're a pioneer in the, the health and wellness industry. There's, I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I had never heard, it, you know, I've been married for a long time, 22 years. Yeah. I have a 14 year old daughter. This is the very first time, you know, getting to know you and your program. This is the first time I've heard that a, a, a woman's nutrition and exercise should really stay in alignment with the changes that her body is having yeah. uh, or, yeah. or the fact that they have seven bodies to their lifetime. I have yeah. to have a talk with Gina. We got to figure out which body she's in right now. <laughs> and, uh -huh. and listen, I think this is very important for men to learn about what you do, because if they care about the women in their lives, they're going to want to share this information with them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, this is right. You, what you're saying is one of those things that makes so much sense when you say it. You're like, why? Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> like that's yeah. like, why isn't this a thing already? That's the <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why you're gonna like the podcast with Chris Bell, the director from Bigger, Stronger, Faster. He talks about that. He goes, yeah. Why am I the only one thinking about this stuff? You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, and here's what's interesting: we have a program right now called the Cure for Social Distancing. Ooh. So when we share this with business leaders, we say, "You have been impacted by social distancing, and people are your greatest yeah. asset, right?" And they say, mm -hmm. "Yes." I said, we have a cure for social distancing to bring them together. You've probably felt some side effects like, like lack of accountability or delegation is tougher or we're not setting goals or sharing vision or all these things. And they go, yeah, I am feeling that. <laughs> so I think it very similarly, you're sharing something with people that they can immediately relate to. Yeah. But this also goes back to a little bit of a philosophy you have on empowering people, which is to basically take control of what they can control. Yes. And, and what I'm hearing is that that mindset is so critical right now. Mm -hmm. And can you just talk a little bit about, you, you know, again, you're sharing something that's an aha moment for us. We hear it and we agree with it. Mm -hmm. But you are teaching women how to take control of the things they can control. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably, Probably not to worry about the things they can't control. <laughs> Yes. Well, it, it, um, I describe it as being put back in the driver's seat when women are stuck in a body. And I experienced this, right. And, and, and even women, even if you haven't had a lot of, you know, health issues per se, but even being like pregnant or something like that, sure. your body changes and you have zero control about what goes on, you know? And, and so you feel like you're stuck in a car and you're shoved in the back seat. You're not in the driver's seat anymore. That's and right. it's, you know, it's your meat suit that you're running around in that you, <laughs> you know, of that you got you had no direction on and okay then, you so got it hold on did you is that your trademark phrase the meat suit no <laughs> isn't that great that i love that true, yeah my... you're living in a meat suit here in that, a meat suit. yeah you know and if you don't have control over that meat suit or it, it just goes off the rails right that's you're right. not in the driver's seat anymore that's the frustrating part so getting you back in the driver's seat that's that's the that's the way i phrase it and it's it's so empowering well, you just got my, my wheels spinning because you know when I <laughs> yeah there's a difference between having a suit and having a tailor-made suit. Mm, I don't yes. know. I'm just I'm just saying you it's all yours. Take it. You got it. <laughs> At least just like give it. me credit when you mention it. But I'm telling you, when I first started wearing suits, you know, you go to the store, you buy a suit off the rack, and you're yeah. like, Yeah, I guess I'm wearing a suit. But there's a whole different ball of wax when somebody's making all the measurements for you and customizing it. Yeah. You know, and you can get, and you feel more, you know, they always say the, the, what is it? The clothes make the man, if you will. So um, oh. when I started, you know, having my suits customized, they just, I felt better, but the meat mm. suit that you're issued at birth, you know, <laughs> I mean, you, you've really got to take control of that. Maybe we do spend more time customizing the suits we wear by choice. Yeah. Rather than the meat suit, we were born. Sorry, I can't get that one out of my head, but <laughs> I may have, I may have just came up with the title for this episode. Yes. <laughs> the meat
meat suit you live if, in. <laughs> if people don't tune in to hear about the meat suit, then, then they probably shouldn't listen to this show at all. I can't wait to see the graphic for that. That's oh my gosh. Well, we got to be careful on that one. <laughs> so I, I also know, you know, in addition to the mindset that you've had with, mm -hmm. you know, shifting your business model, which you did, you didn't just shift a little bit. You shifted out of the office. You went virtual. You went from chiropractic to health and wellness to programs to nutrition. I mean, there's a major shift. How important is the word consistency for you? Oh my God. That's everything. That's so, so I, I will share, you know, I don't, I don't talk a lot about my overall quote unquote business success because that's, that's not what drives me, but I, I had a clinic that was very successful. Um, you know, and, and did very, very well. And I was able to, you know, sell and grow an, uh, a virtual business that I, you know, you know, is a, is a multi seven figure business now because, yeah. you know, in, in less than five years because of consistency, if, if nothing else. Right. And, and it's not about numbers and it's not about whatever. And I, you know, I'm not somebody that people look at and they say, oh, she must have this or this because I don't, sure. right? I'm very casual. I'm very casual. Yeah. And that's just how I like to roll. But the one thing when anybody asks me, what is the biggest thing? It is consistency. I show up every day and, you know, and it goes back to what we were talking about, like, like the working, like that's, it's the simplest thing ever. All you got to do is work. And that consistency is, it doesn't have to be the longest post ever. It doesn't have to be the most epic thing, whatever. It is just every day, something every day and being consistent and that compiled over time. You know, it's like, um, like my husband's a brick mason. So if you're going to build a brick wall, I don't care how many bricks you have to lay every day, right? If you try and lay 30 bricks a day, you might get exhausted, but if you can just do two a day, two a day and do right. that consistently over time, time is your ally. Time works for you then. And all of a sudden you've built this huge wall without even realizing it. Ooh, look at that. I love that. Now you've been consistent in your life. You've been consistent mm -hmm. with your business. Mm -hmm. Obviously probably not perfect at everything, but you make progress right. every day. But the right. consistency side is also a component that you're teaching your clients too. Yeah. You know, you've, you're getting them to stay consistent for 12 weeks. Yeah. And then after that, they still need to stay consistent. They can't fall off the wagon. Yes. Yeah. And the thing about consistency, because I teach a rotational style of eating. Yeah. You're, so you're not eating the same every day. That's not the consistency part of it. It is I'm aligning with my body every day. That's the consistency part yeah. of it and working with your system. And that's the biggest lesson that I teach that women get to take from there on out and use for the rest of their lives. You know, I think, I think one of the things that you're doing with that, the consistency, but also the fact that they don't eat the same things every day. Yeah. For women, for women, that's got to be huge because I know that when Gina and I will go into our zone and we work out, I can get locked in on a meal and eat that forever. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I found that a lot of guys can, right? They're like, yeah. I'm eating tuna and eggs for the next 30 <laughs> days and that's it. And then I'm like, wow, I get it. <laughs> yeah. And Gina's like, I can't do that. <laughs> you yeah. know, I need variety. Um, are you, do you yeah. find that too? That, you know, you obviously yeah. probably speak to a lot of men on the nutrition side too. Do men get locked in on that more yeah. regimented? I know I do. I find my, and I find power in that, but then my wife is different. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, hold on. Let me think about this menu thing for a second, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I think of it as like the, the male and female brain just works differently, right? Yeah. The male brain, it's like having but one, you've known that for a long time, right? right? Yeah. Like one big, you know, one yeah. big tab open men have a sure. big tab open and it can run really fast that one tab, but it's one tab just running real fast. Women have yeah. 30 tabs open on their web browser, yeah. you know? Um, so the, the way the brain works is different, but also the female body just being in different phases, yeah. just apply it nutritionally. And we innately know that. And for other certain things like stress impact and all that stuff, it impacts how our body actually can create and build muscle. So to have a variety is that much more important because our sure. bodies do not build muscle as easily. And we yep. need a variety of amino acids and different proteins to help do that. So that's why a lot of women will, I don't want to say crave the variety, but it's, it's yep. an innate thing that your system realizes. I and can't that's okay. And that's time. a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you need so that. 
So, you know, we've all faced challenges during the pandemic. You're working with clients that are facing challenges. I mean, you're helping to reduce stress. You're helping them to mm -hmm. achieve greatness. Mm -hmm. uh, three words that I loved in the Marine Corps is they said it for everything. When there was a challenge, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And that was a biggie for them. We always have to improvise, adapt, and overcome. And to a certain extent, I'm hearing those three words come out when you're meeting with your clients because they're coming to you with maybe some health issues or maybe some health goals or just stress in their lives. Yeah. Do you find yourself teaching them how to improvise, adapt, overcome? Because they're all facing different things. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the hardest things I feel like um, overall for the female lifestyle, you know, and I, and I experienced this myself going through different, um, you know, cause in, in chiropractic um, you know, it's a male dominated field. So having a business and being in a male dominated field and being a woman and being a mom, like it's just different. I would yeah. go to marketing events and I'd have a baby on my back and I'd have two toddlers in my hands and I would go out and do <laughs> and promote my business and do my thing. And I had other male colleagues that were like, why would you do that? That's unprofessional. And I'd be like, listen, this is, this is how I roll. And this is how I'm going right. to get it done. I'm going to get it done. I just might do it a little differently than you. And, and that's the same thing you know, kind of bleeding over into overall lifestyle, you know, women take care of so much sure. you know, within the home and we are just more responsible for that. And it's not a bad thing, but just having that balance and dynamic means that oftentimes our own health gets put on the back burner yeah. and it's a way of bringing that to the front and saying, you are part of the things that you should be taking care of on a daily basis and saying, that's okay. That's a good thing. And that yeah. helps you when you are your best self all day, every day, you can then be that person you really want to be for everybody else. Cause that's what women want to do. We want to, yeah. we want to help everything and, and take care of people and all that, which is a wonderful thing. But when our bucket is empty, we can't that's do right. that. <clears throat> but when, when we are our healthiest and best self, we can. Well, you know, it's interesting when I was Gina's caregiver, I yeah. found after a while, I stopped taking care of myself. Yes. And so there's yes. a, there's this caregiver mindset that we have where and I've spoke to other caregivers and they always say the same thing. I'll say, you know, when you're a caregiver, who do you stop taking care of? And like yourself. And they, they yeah. get it so fast. What I'm hearing is, is that if you have that nurturing caregiver uh, approach to life or with your family, it's very easy to put yourself last. Yes. And you're teaching them to put themselves first so that they can actually do a better job of caregiving. Yeah. I wish somebody had told me that when I was a caregiver, because honest, I stopped exercising and I, and yeah. I stopped eating right. <clears throat> I was eating, well, they call them comfort foods, you know, and try to make you feel better. But I was uncomfortable <laughs> after I ate them. <laughs> Go figure. But I did a year of that. Yeah. And I had gotten so out of shape, I didn't recognize myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I'm hearing is that you're helping people to re-recognize themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. you're doing it with, with simplicity. Mm -hmm. But that's so critical that you know, you know, it's like when they teach you and well, when they teach you when you're on an aircraft, right, and you're getting ready to take off and they tell you to put your oxygen mask on first. Yeah, this is very much what you're you're sharing is they've got to take care of themselves first. Yeah. So if you want to be a great caregiver, you better take care of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can't you just can't go for very long. It's exhausting. Yeah, yeah. And that again is where all that stress comes in and you get so depleted and then you end up in a place where, like you said, you didn't recognize yourself. And then a lot of women don't know where to go next. They don't yeah. know what steps to take for their health or where to even sure. start. So. Well, do you, in, in the course of your day-to-day -day activities, you do deal with men. Do you ever have them asked to be coached by you? Um, every now and then I do, um, but I don't, that's not my main thing. You know, I stick with, you know, inch wide, mile deep. That's the <laughs> hey, hey, look, you've got your focal point and yeah. you're locked in. <clears throat> yeah. So, so for the guys listening, they can refer their wives or their friends that are female to you. Yep. <laughs> but they could certainly read your books. Yeah. They can listen to your podcast and, and help spread the word about what you're doing because yeah. you are impacting people. I feel on a daily basis, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, what are some goals that you have for the future? You've, you've already done so much, but what's coming up for you? What are some things that you're working on that would take your level of greatness to a whole different you know, oh, stratosphere? Um, I, you know, I always have, I always have a million ideas, a million and two <laughs> ideas, just, 
I want to write more books. I want to start creating more things for women. Um, I would love to have my own supplement line. I just don't know like how I would tackle that. But uh, one of the things that I see in the next five years, what I want to create is actually a retreat center for women to go to, to really learn all these things firsthand. That's great. You know, and, and be immersed in that. Cause the, and, and you know, this, the immersion piece of what you're doing hits things at a different level. Yeah. You so, know, we do, we do a, we do a, a deep dive with leaders. So we'll put yeah. them in a leadership course. Yeah. But they're separated from it, right? It's just 15 to 20 leaders in a room yeah. and they're in that bubble so that there's no distractions. Mm-hmm. You know, they really, I like that you're not calling it a boot camp. You're calling it a retreat. <laughs> yeah. I've already been through boot camp. I have no desire to go to another. Yeah. I have no desire to go to boot camp again, but I love retreats. Yeah. I think what you're doing is amazing. You're inspiring people beyond even just health. The things that you've done, whether you're playing football, writing books, um, you know, having a podcast, launching a business, then launching a new business, even when some people said you shouldn't. Um, you you're you're empowering more people than you'll probably ever realize. Can you just tell us a little bit about your books? Cuz oh. we didn't really get to touch on that, but you have written books and can you just tell us a little bit more about what those books cover? Yeah. So, um the first book I actually wrote was is called Stop Your Day and it's about the top 10 health conditions that impact women and how they present differently in women than in men. Um I don't talk about that one a lot cuz it's not in the main alignment with what I, what I do, but it's really, you know, things like uh, heart disease, you know, okay. lung cancer, all these things, they present differently in women than they do in men. So they're often yeah. missed. And again, women typically won't go in or take care of themselves until like their arm falls off and it stops their day. So, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know. um, but, and then I have uh, my book, the female fat solution. Okay. Talks all about nutrition that matches your hormones and your cycle and why women have such a hard time losing weight because everything is, you know, nutritionally historically set up for a male body, not a female body. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the one that goes into like the seven bodies of Eve. And then I have a book called the female menopause solution where it talks all about the, the, you know, deep dive more from that first book. Um, the section on perimenopause and menopause, sure. it's a whole book dedicated to that. So, wow. And that the, obviously that book, is a different body, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm learning. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, quick, I'm a quick study. <laughs> um, well, let me ask you this. If you had any advice for somebody listening right now, mm-hmm. that just wanted to achieve greatness in their life, what would be some key takeaways that they could leave with today? Some, some advice that you have for that? Yeah. So, um, I, you know, what we talked about with consistency, Yeah. that, that is the biggest piece of advice that I have for anybody with anything really whatever it is that you want to do it doesn't have to be a big movement it doesn't have to like shift your whole life overnight it can just be one little thing that you do every single day and just keep going with it that's where those bricks down yeah yeah that's where the magic really is um yeah and oftentimes we look at things like like hearing like oh i sold my clinic and all these things those are big things but what led to that and what happened after that are the little, you know, it's like each little brick that really makes up the whole story of it. Mm-hmm. And that's where, that's where the magic is. So I want to ask you one last question about your program. Mm-hmm. When, when somebody comes to you for the program and they go through the 12 weeks, do people repeat and go through it again at some point? Or how, how does that work? Is there a sequel is what I'm asking. <laughs> yes. Yes. Great question. So <laughs> I talk a lot about the 12 week. I actually do have a part two and a part okay. three. So for women who want to work with me for three months, six months, or nine months at a time, we do that. And then there's like an ongoing support. Um, Because some of the goals may go beyond 12 weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And some gals, they just, they need that. They, um, they want accountability. They want accountability. So they want to keep going with what we've done and just stay accountable with it because they just need that support in their life. You're there to keep them consistent. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Number 83, the tight end. (laughs) <laughs> teaching them how to wear that meat suit better <laughs> that's right yeah we may go we may go viral on that alone <laughs> <There's>... probably <laughs> well let me let me ask you then if somebody wants to reach out to you connect with you learn more about what you offer um mm-hmm. what's the best way for them to contact you yeah so i am all over the interwebs um facebook instagram dr beth westy uh, i have a youtube channel that's called dr beth westy i do a lot of videos um and those are there i have a podcast called the female health solution and then i my website is also drbethwesty.com so any of those you know 
places people can kind of reach out, connect, ask questions, or just learn more about, you know, how to get unstuck from where they're at. Well, you are so amazing. You are so incredible at helping people achieve greatness. And I am a little jealous because I can't work with you because I'm one of the <laughs> males, but I can refer people to you. And that's what's great. I can refer people to you. Yeah. I absolutely love what you're doing to help people achieve greatness in their lives. What a, what a rewarding feeling that is every day. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love it. I, I get to wait. I feel really blessed that I get to wake up every day and I look forward to what I do every single day. That is so awesome. Yeah. I just wanted to say thanks for joining us today. I know you made an impact in everybody listening today. And it wouldn't surprise me if you have a lot more clients based on this. You are truly phenomenal. And I think you are hiding a time machine from us somewhere. I, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, we'll have to have you back on so we can talk about all the new things that you've accomplished. Yeah, and that would be amazing. More people. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Beth. It's great talking to you. Always great to see you. And you are an inspiration to so many. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.